And just to make it interesting, let's play Russian roulette with this guy. See how lucky he is today. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today we are continuing the Cowboy series that we started last week. And this time we have the legendary, the almighty 357 Magnum. No cowboy hat today because that straw hat is cold as hell, but I am gonna keep the mustache, at least until we finish the cowboy series. As much as some of you guys want me to get rid of it, I will not do that. So this is the Ruger Blackhawk single action 357 Magnum revolver, and the single action part is kind of important when we're talking about cowboy guns. So the history of the 357 Magnum kind of speaks for itself. It has been around forever and is widely regarded as one of the most effective handgun calibers on the planet. Believe it or not, I think this is the very first time we've ever had a 357 Magnum on the channel, so. Let's shoot this thing. All right, let's see what this thing is all about. This is the 357 Magnum cartridge, kind of a long skinny one for a handgun round, and it has been a very long time since I've fired one of these, so. God, that's a glorious sound. I don't know if the sights are on target or what, so I'm just gonna aim right at that yellow plate, and we'll see where it goes. A little spicy, <laughs> not too bad though. I love it. I think that's all six. Nope. <laughs> I gotta say, that feels really good. People always talk about the recoil of a 357 Magnum, and maybe it's because I shoot crazy powerful guns a lot, but that did not feel very bad at all. So it could be this gun, or maybe I'm just becoming immune to recoil. Let's shoot six more. It is freezing cold out here today, so if I miss, it's because I'm shaking. That's my excuse for the day. Let's try that green target. It's a small one, but see if we can hit it. Nice. <laughs> ah, I missed. I love it. I'm not a huge fan of these single action revolvers that you have to eject the shells one at a time. I kind of like the cylinders that open up and you can just smack them all out, but it's part of the history, I guess. Well, since cowboys rarely use both hands, at least in the movies, let's go ahead and fire this puppy one-handed and see how it feels. <laughs> Definitely rises on you a little bit more. Feels good though. Hey guys, before we go any further, I wanna take just a minute to thank We The People Holsters for sponsoring today's video. We The People Holsters manufactures their products in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I don't think I've ever searched for a holster that they did not have on their website. They have hundreds of holsters for all different styles of carry and every accessory you would possibly need for CCW. They also have a great range rewards program where you can get points, and they call them rounds, for purchases, birthdays, and even referral of other customers. So when you get enough rounds, you can redeem those and get big discounts on their products. And not only that, it is also a holster company that I have used for a very long time. And this one is on a high point. So you know if I trust it to carry a high point safely, it's gotta be a good holster because you never know what is gonna happen with these things. Is a high point drop safe? I don't know, but I don't wanna find out. So whether you're looking for a new gun belt or a holster, I can pretty much guarantee you that we the people will have what you're looking for. Like I said, this is a company that I have personally used for a very long time and they always have the holster that I want. So definitely go check them out. And again, a big thank you to we the people holsters for sponsoring this video. Well, the 357 is obviously a very popular handgun caliber. So there is a ton of different ammo to choose from. We have two different hollow points out here and I wanna shoot each of them just to see which one is the most powerful. So we can use it when we actually test this thing. First up, we have the 158 grain Federal High Velocity Hollow Point. 
and the Winchester Super X 125 grain hollow point. We'll start with the Federal, then we'll shoot the Winchester, and whichever one feels more powerful is the one that we'll use on our self-defense test. I guess I'll just go for the rubber dummy on this. Not bad at all, really. Kind of like the full metal jackets that we were shooting. <laughs> the Winchester is way more powerful. It is a lighter bullet, so I assume it's got a lot more velocity and as you saw, quite a bit more recoil. Let's put a meter on the steel and see if we notice a difference in how hard they're hitting the target. Starting with the Federal again. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, big difference there too. All right, if you saw last week's video, you know that we shot these little baby watermelons with the black powder revolver. So we are gonna do the same exact thing with the 357 Magnum and compare the results. And for this one, we are using the 125 grain Winchester hollow point. I figure if we shoot some of the same stuff in these videos, maybe at the end of the series, we could pick a clear winner for the ultimate cowboy gun. Let's see what the 357 Magnum does. I think that one just took the lead in the watermelon test. <laughs> Not even close. Well, I'll try to run some footage here just in case you missed it, but with the black powder revolver, after we shot the watermelon, I showed you there were some pretty big pieces left on the table. It didn't do bad, but it didn't completely explode it. With the 357, there is literally nothing left. That might be one of the most impressive watermelon explosions I've ever seen. Well, as we usually do, we have saved the best for last, and it is time for our self-defense test on a ballistic dummy lab head. And I'm looking at myself in the flip screen and realizing how absolutely ridiculous I look with a mustache. And this is our ballistic dummy lab head. We've used these things a million times. It's basically just a ballistic shell head with a skull and all the internals underneath it, and still probably my favorite thing to use for testing the effectiveness of bullets. And by the way, we do have a discount code with ballisticdummylab.com. So if you want to get some of this stuff for yourself, just use the code one shot TV at checkout and they will give you a discount 357 Magnum versus human head let's do it I was gonna use something like a cowboy load just to keep it authentic but it would be silly not to use the most powerful round that we have which of course is the Winchester 125 grain hollow point with all the modern ammo out there these days, even with a single action revolver, most people are not gonna be using cowboy loads and just to make it interesting let's play Russian roulette with this guy See how lucky he is today. <laughs> There's one. Two. <laughs> it is weird when you don't know if the round is gonna go off or not. He's halfway through the cylinder and he's still alive. There it goes. <laughs> Oh my God, that did a lot of damage. <laughs> I don't think you made it. Well, I know it's comparing apples to oranges because with the black powder revolver, we just used a 44 caliber round lead ball and that was a 357 Magnum hollow point. So it's obviously gonna do a lot more damage. But once again, the 357 is easily in first place after that. Let's take a look at the damage that we got. So it either went in right between his eyes or maybe slightly to the left because it literally blew that entire left side wide open. But the entrance hole does look like it's pretty much in the middle. That 
is very impressive. Once again, maybe the most impressive result I've ever seen with a handgun round, other than the 500 Magnum. He's certainly blind in his right eye, at the very least, and probably not being saved. Let's go around to the back. No way. That bullet did not come out the other side. At least I'm not seeing an exit hole. That is just a little tear in the ballistics gel, but I don't see any exit holes on the back of this head. There's a little mold spot right there because I've had this head for three weeks now. But I don't know about you guys, I do not see an exit hole, which is absolutely incredible. And here's another look at the front of this thing. It like turned that head inside out. I don't even know what that is sticking out of his eyeball, but it wasn't there before, that's for sure. And then on the side, you can see how it just completely split that thing wide open. I actually think I see a piece of the bullet and there goes a piece of our skull yeah so that is a bullet fragment right there i actually think that 357 magnum stopped in that head which is just amazing okay i'm seeing more bullet fragments i'm just going to go ahead and pull that off <laughs> You think it was slightly compromised? There it is. That bullet is all the way back at the end of that wound cavity. That is incredible. I'm trying to not get all that fluid on my gloves. So there is a big piece of the bullet right there. Probably a large majority of it, honestly. Here's some of the jacket over here. I'm trying to get the camera to focus on it for you guys. Clearly some of the copper jacket, and then we have smaller bullet fragments laying on the table as well. Wow. Well, I'm gonna have to watch the slow-mo just to be sure, but as of right now, I do not think that bullet passed all the way through the head, and that is how you maximize bullet effectiveness. It hit the intended target, expanded, did a ridiculous amount of damage, and it did not overpenetrate or waste any energy. That actually shocked me. The 357 Magnum is legit. All right, guys, well, I think the 357 Magnum just took a giant lead as the most impressive cowboy gun that we've tried so far. And to be honest, it's gonna be tough to beat. That is literally the most perfect result I've ever seen in a ballistic dummy lab head. It went in, expanded, did a crazy amount of damage, and did not overpenetrate, which is exactly what you want from a self-defense caliber. I do have a couple more handguns to try, but in my experience, the bigger handgun calibers usually just blow right through those heads. And to my surprise, the 357 Magnum did not. So we'll do the handguns, then maybe some long guns as well. If you have any suggestions, definitely put those in the comments. But right now, this bad boy is all alone at the top. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. As always, hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.